This is the Jared with the Rainbow Goddess, the Rainbow Goddess. Oh, hey girl, hey. Yeah, just hanging out in my kitchen counter. I just want to welcome you to the plant-based party power where I teach you plant-based recipes. I have so many delicious things in store for you. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make hibiscus tea with pineapple juice and tamarind. I want it to be like a longer video because I want to walk you through like all of my thought process. Um, so when I'm making recipes, I usually, I'm not making like one recipe. Like if you think about one dish, like the dish that I made last week, which was the chorizo spice black bean burger, with jicama fries and chile crema and guac and pickled onions. I mean, that was actually like five recipes in one dish. So because I'm usually doing five recipes for one dish, I really have to understand the timing of things. I, I really, really get why people think it's so labor intensive to cook at home, which I mean, it just, it, it does take its time, of course. But I feel like if you know how to do things in an efficient order, I think it would make making things from scratch like a lot easier. And honestly, everything made from scratch is just like way more delicious and usually healthier. Although you'll see that I cook with a lot of oils and I do add sugar and I add salt. But believe it or not, that's still gonna end up being healthier than going out to the restaurant. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start with a dry hibiscus. So this hibiscus is like very, 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 very dry. It's like crunchy, it's so dry. Now, when I have bought hibiscus before, and if you're wondering where you could buy it, you can buy it at like any Mexican grocery store. If you buy it from the bulk section, and especially if it's not completely dry, sometimes it will have a little bit of mold in it. Um, if you get it from a package, it's most likely you can just go straight to using it. But just in case, I am going to soak, kind of like wash out my hibiscus um, with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and some water. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little tiny splash of vinegar. And the reason I put apple cider vinegar is because it's an antibacterial. And I'm gonna tell you a secret. The real reason why I'm making hibiscus right now is because I want to make um, hibiscus carnitas afterwards. I made it one other time and they turned out really super delicious. I'm gonna let them sit there just for like a minute. While that's sitting, I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing my tamarind. Now usually I would buy the tamarind just dry, um, which it comes in these like really big pods. Again, you wanna get it at a Mexican grocery store. And first I would crack the shell off and then I would put it in boiling water. Um, and that just helps it loosen from the seed. In this case, I'm actually gonna have to do the same even though it's already been, um, it looks like, I mean the seeds are still in there and it still has like some stem in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a pot with a little bit of water and um, let all of that nice pulp loosen and the flavor profile of tamarind is very similar i mean they taste totally different but they're both sweet and sour so i'm gonna put this over here i'm gonna go ahead and rinse my um my hibiscus because it's sat there long enough and after i drain it i'm going to give it another rinse perfect now it's ready for the pot Yep, so I, I mean, you could add like way more water than that. That's definitely gonna be like a concentrate. But that's, I, I don't feel like I should make too much tea because it is just me, my mom, and my dad. And then, while those two are going, I'm gonna start preparing my pineapple. Look at this beautiful pineapple, it's so yellow. I'm so used to them being so green in California. Beautiful, so if you can see, there's still a little bit of spice on there and I definitely want to take those off. Cause who wants spikes in their drinks? Ew, I don't. 
And um, right now the camera turned off, but the tamarind water started to boil. So I did go ahead and, I did I turn it off? Oh yeah, I turned it off and I just mixed it. And on, it's pretty much ready to go. But that's because that one had already been cooked down. If you do get it from raw, then most likely you'd still have to just let it simmer. Okay, that looks great. It's okay. That's my dad. Um, and now the other part you definitely want to avoid is the core. That's what, I mean, the whole thing can make you get that weird tingly feeling in your tongue, but but the parts you want to avoid the most is the center and the spikes. Okay, so I'm going to blend it. So if you have a Vitamix, like use the plunger to make it like go down, or I guess if you just cut the chunks like a lot smaller, then it'll work out. And now my tamarind is all ready. Ready. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. You see the seeds are like very, very loose now, and I can use that delicious tea part. So I'm gonna use a strainer, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it through my strainer and combine it with my pineapple juice. Now, this wasn't really that much tamarind. I would have used more tamarind, but um, this is what I had available to me. Um, and I feel like that's just like the whole thing about the kitchen. It's like, I, I, want, I want you to learn to learn. I want you to learn more than anything how to get creative with what you've got and what would what makes a good combination. Okay, so um, my hibiscus is doing its thing. So meanwhile, imagine how nice your body is going to receive its food if before you ate it, you already knew all the good things it does for you. I want to start educating you on what amazing attributes your food has. The hibiscus boosts your immune system. It helps to prevent cold and flu. It uh, benefits weight loss. It lowers blood pressure. It, lower, it aids in anxiety and depression. It aids digestion. It lowers cholesterol. It protects liver against infections and diseases. It helps menstrual cramps and it slows down the growth of cancerous cells. I mean, when you start cooking with a beautiful blank slate of a kitchen, oh my God, it is way more enjoyable and way easier because I think that when there is a lot of chaos in the kitchen, it kind of makes you feel chaotic. It makes you think in a chaotic way. And so then you might not be cooking with a sense of ease and joy because there's chaos around you. So I really want to push you to start having more cleanliness in your kitchen and not, not putting it in the sink and waiting until later, but really just getting to it right away because I mean, this is literally where we eat. This is where we make our food. If we cannot even keep where we eat clean, if they, you know, it's like they say, don't shit where you eat. Well, I feel like that's what they were talking about. <laughs> don't leave shit everywhere where you eat, where you are preparing your food. I promise you it'll make the process way more enjoyable. And it'll make you feel so good about yourself and so proud that you were able to keep a nice clean kitchen. Imagine if the thing that you have to do multiple times a day, you like really enjoyed the whole process of it and it didn't put a hole in your pocket. That'd be amazing. You see, easy peasy lemon squeezy. So by now, my hibiscus is definitely super ready. It looks really, really dark. That's because I put a lot in there. Now I'm going to 
Um, drain it, strain it into here. Put it with the rest of my goods. Oh, I should be showing you. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm. So there's still gonna be a lot of flavor left in this, I assure you. So what we're going to do is now add some cold water to it and kind of like squeeze it in there. We're gonna try to get as much flavor as we can out of there. Yeah, like I'm pouring the water in and it's like instantly already turning super red. <laughs> now I do wanna say you're not, you're just like not gonna get all the flavor out of it. It is still gonna have a little bit of a hibiscus taste when you're done squeezing it. Um, so I, I would go with flavors that go well with a little bit of sweet and sour. Last time I made them, I did um, like a Szechuan, like teriyaki type of <laughs> sauce and it was really good. I'm going to like actually physically squeeze it with my hands. Now, the longer you boil it, the more tender it's going to be. Right now, it's probably still gonna be a little bit chewy, like the, the texture's a little bit like jerky, I think. Let's try it. It's a little bit like jerky. So, I haven't tried this, but I think this would be a really interesting experiment, which would be to soak the hibiscus overnight <clears throat> in like a broth so that it really absorbs, like in a, in a marinade. You know, we could call it a broth or a marinade. So we'll, we'll put it in some water. We'll put some like soy sauce and some other seasonings and then we'll see what it's like tomorrow. That is another thing I hope you get from this, which is to just be experimental. You know, have fun in the kitchen. It's like a laboratory. Let's see what you're gonna get. <laughs> if I put a little bit of water in there, just enough to cover it. I mean, it doesn't even have to be soy sauce. You can literally just put it in salt water. You know what, let's do that. Let's just put in some salt water. You know what that made me think of? Like when they cure meat with salt. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna put quite a bit of salt. Cool. So I'm just gonna let this sit overnight and then we'll prepare it tomorrow. And yeah, we'll see. Oh yeah, so obviously let's let's try out the drink. So I'm gonna put this back on so that it... Oh. <laughs> I want like some of that. Oh, that's so yummy. And honestly, like the, obviously pineapple is like super duper sweet, so that already gives it the sweetness. Mmm. Mmm. That's yummy. So here is my final product. My mom gave me a wine bottle to put it into. Um, I do want to say, so I stopped drinking alcohol about a couple months ago, and I've done the stop drinking alcohol before, and I want to say that if you decided to stop, don't ever decide to do it again. I mean, it's just so unnecessary, honestly. Like you, you really learn to just uh, channel other people's drunk energies and be able to like have fun on their level, you know? You don't need it. So anyway, but one of the times that I stopped drinking alcohol, it was a time when I was working at a restaurant and I was very used to having a glass of wine after work. It was like my form of telling my body like, okay, it's time to relax, check out of work. When I decided to stop drinking alcohol, I was like, I need to replace that with something else. And so I started making hibiscus tea. I don't know if it's so much about the actual drink, more than it is that you have decided that when you are drinking whatever, it's time to relax. So you keep sending that signal to your brain while you're drinking this, and I felt like it was just a really, really fabulous substitute. Um, so is kombucha, because they're very similar. So I like to get things that are kind of similar to like the naughty things that I used to like that are healthier versions. 
um, to help that transition. So I hope this helps anybody in their journey of quitting alcohol. Thank you so much for being here. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. Also subscribe to my channel so I know I actually have some viewers out there. And if you want to get notified of whenever I post a video, besides the Monday ones, because I will have some surprise ones sometimes throughout the week, then I say go ahead and hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. Have a healthy, happy week.